In this demonstration, we're going to talk about this Cordis SOA grid and integration layer, which forms the underpinning of the Cordis business operations platform. The Cordis SOA grid is an integration capability built around an enterprise service bus type architecture, which forms the base layer of the Cordis business operations platform and provides a set of adapters and integration points into various backend systems and also externally to web services. In the demonstration, we're going to show how we can connect to multiple backend systems and then link these integration points through a business process in order to orchestrate features and functions of those backend systems into a single orchestrated process. So let's get into the demonstration. On the left-hand side, I have my Cordis workspace and the hierarchical view of my project. As we can see currently, all of these are empty. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a connection to a backend legacy database and then expose that through web services so that we can integrate with other external web services within a Cordis business process. So let's get into that. The first thing we're going to do is create a connection to our backend database. And to do that, I'm going to create a new service group. And we're going to create a service group of type WS App Server that gives us connectivity to a host of backend systems through web services. In this case, it will be a database. I'm simply going to run through the wizard and we will call this customer service group. And we're going to select all of the defaults within the wizard. We need to select our database configuration, which is the IP details and login details of our backend database, which are pre-configured in this case, and finish the wizard. And we've now created our service group, including our database connection to the backend. And we'll see that here. So I can right click and start. And we now have a running connection to our backend system, which we can then start to do things with. Once we have our connection to the backend system, we need to create the metadata for that database. So simply creating a new database metadata, which will allow us to inspect the database and look at the tables and fields within those tables. So we will call this customer metadata. And I'm simply going to select all of the tables from the database. And then I'm going to drag all of these tables over to the right hand side and simply save. What happens now through the connection to the back end, we are inspecting the database and pulling back all of the metadata about the tables and fields within those tables and indeed the relationships between those tables. Once we've finished, we can see we now have a list of all of the tables in the database within our project. The next thing to do would be to create web services on top of these tables. So again, this is simply a case of right click and I have an option to generate web service operations. Again, it's a wizard and I'm going to choose to generate a new web service interface. I need to select the folder I want the web services to be created in. Click Next. I then need to choose the tables on which I wish to create web services. Also, whether I choose to have update and delete operations on those tables, and whether I wish the web services to respect the referential links between those tables. So we will say, yes, we want that on the orders and the customers tables. When I click Finish, Cordis generates all of the necessary web services, creating the SQL code, creating the web service wrappers, and creating the WSDL files so that we can actually start using these services. When this is finished within the web services folder, we will now be able to see in our internal folder a set of web services which allow us to interact with the tables in the database. The process is similar to add an external web service into our project. I'm going to simply right click on external and I'm going to create a web service. 
And again, I have a wizard which allows me to import this service uh, from a WSDL or a number of other methods. I'm going to import from a WSDL and we're going to call it currency converter. Cut and paste the URL and click on show services and that will go and look at the WSDL on the internet and give me a list of services that are available. We're interested in the get conversion web service, which will do currency conversion for us. Simply click on finish, and that service is brought into context within our project. And we'll see here, I now have an external service called get conversion. The final piece of the puzzle is to assemble some of these services into a process and thereby creating a higher level business service which can be consumed within an application. The example I'm going to give will accept an order number from anywhere within a process or within a user interface and return the value of that order, however, always in euros, regardless of the currency the order was actually in. So to do that, we're going to create a business process. And in the business process modeler, I'm going to create a very simple process with two steps and a finish. And the two steps in our case are going to be look up order and then convert currency. As we know, we have web services that do these two operations. So if I go to my workspace on the left and navigate to my internal web service first, which in the set of web services is get orders. I simply drag and drop the get orders web service onto my process model and that associates that service with this activity in the process. Likewise for my currency conversion service if I go to external I can simply take the get conversion web service and drag and drop it onto the second activity in my process associating that service with the process. What I need to do next is actually wire up this process so that when the input of an order number comes, we look up the order, we pass the order value to the currency conversion web service, and then finally we output the converted currency. To do that, I go to what we call the message map. And in the message map, I will see a representation of my process. So the start, the lookup order, convert currency, and the end and underneath the mappings between the fields of the various services. So within lookup order, if on the right hand side, the get orders web service requires an order ID. So I simply drag and drop this. And within the process itself, we have process specific messages for the input. So we simply drag and drop that and the output, which we'll come to in a moment. So when the input message comes to the process, which is an order number, it will be mapped to the order ID of the get orders object. If we move to the currency conversion service, then if we look at the input for that, that requires a currency code from and to and an amount. So if we look at the output of the lookup order, which is down here, then we'll see some of the fields we require. So order total, we drag and drop, we know that maps to the amount. And indeed, order currency, we know that will map to the from currency for our service. Now the to currency, I'll drag and drop this in here, we're going to set as euros. Simply add a fixed value for EUR. And then finally, we need to map the output of the conversion web service. So we will go to the end. And on the left hand side, we will see the output of the get currency, which in this case is a conversion result. And we simply map that to the output field of our process. So that's all of the mapping done. We will now save the process and we will call it order conversion process and when the process is saved we can immediately switch back to the model and execute it.
we're going to execute here in interactive mode, but the process is also immediately available for execution externally and callable by either a user interface or a web service. So here in the Run Interactively dialog, we see a view of the process and then have the ability to step through the process activity by activity or simply run it to the end. So we're going to step into the first activity and we're being asked for our order number, which is the input to the process. So we'll say 10254 and say OK. And we can see now that the input and the lookup order service have completed. We're now waiting for the convert currency service. If I click on the next activity, the convert currency service has now run. And then if I click next, we can see the process is now complete. And if I right click on the output, we'll be able to see that the output message is in fact 110,500, which is the order value for that particular order converted into euros. What we've seen in the last 10 minutes is the ability to integrate simply to uh, different backend systems, both databases and external web services, and then hook those services up into a process creating a higher level business service. Mm -hmm.